today there's a new moon in virgo we also have Pluto retrograde returning to Capricorn from where it's been in Aquarius. So kind of suddenly this shift into some earth energy, more tangible, more practical, grounded, also feeling our limitations. So let's dive in and talk about what these energies are going to look like for today and this whole moon cycle. I'm Marina Orms here with your Astro Vibe for Monday, September 2nd. So September 2nd, the day of the exact Virgo new moon. And with this new moon, we are completing the moon cycle that began with the Leo new moon. So we're completing that theme of focusing on self-expression, creativity, finding ways to express yourself, shine your light, share your gifts. And as I mentioned during the uh, my talk for last month's new moon in Leo, this is an interesting and was an interesting Leo moon cycle because we had Mercury retrograde for most of it. So that Mercury retrograde energy meant that even though we were focusing on the theme of self-expression, focusing on creative work, a lot of that is and was worked out internally. So on the inner level, working through the issues that have to do with who you are, how you share your gifts in the world, the best ways to express yourself creatively and um, kind of, you know, letting all that bubble under the surface in terms of what you're learning about yourself. And so now Mercury is direct. We, it's still in Leo, but we are just completing the Leo moon cycle. It's just the Leo moon cycle because it began with the Leo new moon. So, so we're concluding that, but as we do, we're shifting into this Virgo moon cycle. So with today's new moon in Virgo, we begin a new cycle. We are going to be focused for this cycle on grounding, how we put those things we learned about self-expression into practice, how we get tangible, um, maybe focusing on some perfecting, uh, right? Noticing what needs, uh, where we need to apply some technical knowledge, some um, areas of technique and getting those details right. So Virgo is the energy of how we make something more beautiful, how we make something more perfect. Let's not think of it as striving for some unattainable goal of perfection, but instead think of it as perfect now, and we get to continue to make it more perfect, right? That's what life is all about. We are evolving in our process, in our skills, in our knowledge of ourself, our ability to manage, you know, maybe some of our own emotional patterns and how they might get in the way, some of our limiting thoughts. And Virgo energy, of course, brings up that theme of criticism. So, it's it's just good with the Virgo moon and the Virgo new moon to recognize that where where those critical thoughts come up, self, some self criticism even right, some some inner critic the critical inner voice, the, the inner dialogue that um, might be thinking you aren't good enough, you aren't worthy, you aren't. Uh, whatever, you know, fill in the blank enough. And so with the Virgo energy, we want to recognize those voices when they come up so that we can recognize them for what they are, right? We are, the Virgo energies, the intention behind it is not to stop ourselves or limit ourselves or prevent <laughs> ourselves from expanding into our our fullness, our wholeness, our, you know, the, the magic and the beauty of the potential of who we are. So instead, let's think of it as 
I am perfect right now. By definition, I am perfect because I am here. I am me. This is what it means to be me. So by definition, I'm perfect. And the Virgo energy can say, okay, where can I work on this perfection to let it grow, let it become even better, let it continue to evolve and unfold in its highest potential. So that's how we want to think about the Virgo energy. Again, with uh, Pluto now having gone back into Capricorn, I have a few videos out about that. There's uh, one video in particular about Pluto's return to Capricorn, or it's not technically a return is when something goes around full cycle. So instead, this is really more like a re-entry uh, because Pluto has uh, moved forward in the Zodiac into Aquarius, but then it goes retrograde. It backs up into the sign of Capricorn, kind of like if you were driving down the road and uh, saw a beautiful flowering bush out of the corner of your eye and you decided, okay, I'm gonna, just going to, there's nobody here. I'm going to put it in reverse, back my car up so I can see that flowering bush more clearly. <laughs> that analogy just popped into my head. Okay. So anyway, but, but that's what the planets do. It's like they go backward over territory where they've already been. They give us a chance to see what we've seen before, go over it again, do some reflection, some reconsidering. Maybe there's something we want to tweak or do differently. And maybe we want to take it in more deeply, right? Like the beauty of that flowering bush. So, so with the energy of Pluto now going retrograde, it has re-entered Capricorn. Technically, it re-enters Capricorn uh, Sunday evening. So uh, depending on when you're watching this, um, I don't have the exact time. It's a, I think it's around 8 p.m., 8 something p.m. Pacific time. So anyway, um, as Pluto goes back into Capricorn for these next several weeks, we go back into some um, uh, more Con confrontations with some hard realities. And uh, again, as we, this is really our final opportunity to work with this Pluto in Capricorn energy. And we can think of it as an opportunity. It's, uh, you know, just like everything else in the Zodiac. It's, it's an opportunity to do this work, which lays a foundation for something else, right? And, and so Capricorn and Pluto in Capricorn reminds us that we, we have to do some deeper work, some harder work on looking at things that limit us that have been beneath the surface. And so Pluto asks us to look at those things and Capricorn reminds us that we have the chance to do them differently. So Capricorn energy is about structures and how we want to think about structures differently. And so think about our limitations, how we relate to and respond to our limitations, what we're going to do about it. And Capricorn energy is about doing that hard work to make something happen. So we've got these next few weeks with Pluto in Capricorn asking us to continue to do this deeper work of confronting our limitations, looking at what we've been doing and how it's worked and what we want to do differently, thinking about what things could be different and how we want to lay the groundwork for making them different, especially related to systems, structures, and ways of getting organized. So, so we've got uh, with this Virgo moon cycle, because the new moon is the beginning of the, the Virgo moon cycle, which will have a couple of eclipses coming up as well. So the Pisces full moon in two weeks following this uh, new moon will be um, 
uh, eclipse in a uh, full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces. And I shared a video recently on the eclipses too, and kind of what to look for and expect for those eclipses coming up, how you can work with these energies. And so this moon cycle, because it's focused on Virgo, we want to think about as our self-care as being how do we implement? How do we put things into practice? How do we make things tangible? And so think of yourself as the editor, the proofreader, right? Looking at whatever it is you are working on or focusing on in your life to ask yourself, okay, you know, how could this be better? Where can I look for areas that could need a little maintenance or up? upgrading or improvement and uh, especially when it comes to very much the details the behind the scenes ways of technical you know the technical dimensions of how things work how things operate and so that could show up in a lot of different ways if you are working on a garden you want to think about you know okay what are the best conditions for my garden? What's doing well? What's not doing well? What do I want to change? What can I do differently? How can I make this even better? Recognizing that it's already perfect, right? It's already perfect in its in its wildness, in its imperfection, in whatever is happening right now. And let's think about what we want to do differently, how we might approach it for next time, what different ways we want to treat our garden or what different plants might do better in this environment or what's changing about the environment. So so anything in your life that has, um, a, you know, a, something you're working on and maybe it's related to the self-expression themes from the previous moon cycle, those creative projects might need a little attention, a little paying attention to what would work better, what could be different, how we can improve on it, what are the details. So thinking about yourself as that discerning eye of the like like the editor or the proofreader to see, you know, where where could we uh, notice the little details that could be better and ultimately when we update those details we make a more beautiful whole, whole W-H-O-L-E. <laughs> so if you think of like a tapestry and how if you're making that tapestry thread by thread, um, it's going to have more of a feeling of quality, of perfection, if if you're really attending to the details, every single thread and how the ingredients in like in food, right? The ingredients you choose are what go into the final product, even though it might um, not seem on the surface to make a difference. When you attend to those details, you can make something more perfect, more ascended, more close to the divine and that is the opposite energy of Pisces and how it speaks to us through Virgo. So the divine reminds us that it's by attending to the technical, physical, practical details here on earth in the physical world that helps us create something that is reflective of the divine. Same is true of you and your body, how you take care of your body, getting the nutrition you need, the rest you need, drinking plenty of water, getting uh, exercise that is in alignment with your flow, right? It's not pushing you to do something that's um, hard on you or stressful, but is 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 joyful and fun and flowing and, and ultimately supportive of your happiness and your wholeness. So thinking about what your body needs, what you need, what your soul needs to express yourself and to do the things that you are working on in your life in more beautiful, ascended ways as they, uh, as you evolve, right? And the, 
and the reflection of your expressions evolve in the form of the projects and the things that you work on and contribute to and help to create. So that's what we want to think about with this Virgo energy with Pluto now returning to Capricorn. I highly recommend that you check out or maybe review that video on Pluto's re-entry into Capricorn. I believe that was released on August 11th. So it's been uh, a couple of weeks now, but you should be able to find uh, that video for Pluto re-entering re Capricorn and and uh, now with this Virgo new moon we we are there we are here right we are entering this period where things might feel rough again they might feel hard we are confronting our limitations some of the feelings of freedom that we might have been tapping into recently with Pluto in Aquarius we might we might go back and find that those feelings of freedom feel uh, questionable or more restricted, right? There's less of a feeling of spaciousness. Um, but at the same time, remember that Pluto in Capricorn is there for a reason. It is inviting us to step into our best way of responding. We still have more time here, which is a gift to uh, to work on our, our responsibility, right? And how we can put our efforts and our hard work and our good intentions into the, uh, the practical world of the things that we want to shape, lay the groundwork for, um, and help to bring about the changes that are important to us. So, um, so that is, uh, those are my thoughts for the new moon. I do have a guided meditation for this new moon. Check it out, um, in the description for this video. So it's a guided meditation for the Virgo new moon. Uh, it is, um, how to be the key to lasting change. Um, and it will help you tap into your own inner wisdom about what is true and right for you, what is supportive to help you unlock um, your highest potential and uh, support it, do this deeper work of the self-care that helps you be who you are here to be. So check out that guided meditation. I'm Marina Orms. My website is astrologyheals.com. I also had a fantastic conversation with uh, Thea Wershing yesterday, the uh, creator of the American Renaissance Tarot. So if you missed that video, definitely that is a don't miss. Um, really, you know, I it's great when I say all the things, but it's even better when uh, there's uh, somebody I can share it with, right, and have that dialogue and that conversation. So you can benefit from listening to our conversation about our, the Neptune's cycles, the Pluto cycles, how our time in history connects to and brings full cycle, the pla outer planet placements from where they were just before the Civil War, during the American Revolution. So, so many uh, synchronicities here, and it was just a fantastic conversation. So I recommend that if you missed it, go check it out. Thank you so much for being here and for subscribing. I so appreciate your support and I love hearing from you. So let me know what you think and I will see you next time with more astrology for unshakable self-care. Bye for now.